Mr. Kimmel uh, had the ability to work on a project and stay on it until it was completed. He didn't ever give up. And whenever he got going on a project, that's all he thought about. He truly was a genius. And there's so many subjects he was brilliant on and was very willing to share knowledge about how stuff worked. He shared it on a, a level that everybody could understand. He didn't try and overpower you. I mean, he just would explain how something would work. If you got him talking about something he was interested in, then he became very animated. He loved to talk about politics or theology or engineering or photography or whatever he happened to be into. While Garmin was in college getting an advanced degree in petroleum engineering, he worked part-time for Black Civils and Bryson. And when he finished his degree, he went to work for them full-time. Mr. Smith, who was then in, going to be in charge, uh, proposed that they move the entire engineering department to Kansas City. Most of them were located in Oklahoma City at that time. It got bad enough that um, Smith fired Raymond. And two months later, I quit. And we thought, well, we would made Black Sobles and Bryson uh, money in the past, maybe we could, you know, do something on our own. We used the um, first syllable of his name and the first syllable of my name, incorporated it as Kim Rand. While I was in Stillwater going to college, I would come down on, in the summer and I'd work with Mr. Kimmel. Uh, he had several projects he wanted done he asked me if I would come to work for Kimray, and I was elated because at that time they had a rule against employees, family working for Kimray, and they changed the rule so I could go to work there. When I joined Kimray in uh, 1971, I was the 64th employee at Kimray. By the time I became president, we had about 600 employees, and that was in 2005. I think my father was able to grow the company simply because he was willing and able to pay attention to some of the details. Um, and I think that made them a really good team because Garmin continued to focus on product development and on vision, on leading the company more from a visionary standpoint. The only products we had were products he designed. Most engineers, if they're designing things, they have a scratch pad and they keep drawing things. And Mr. Kimmel did all his design work in his mind and whenever he finally finished the design he would sit down at his breakfast room table and in one evening all the drawings would be made to make a, a product. The products that we started with that we still make today 70 years after Garmin introduced a piloted pressure regulator into the industry has been virtually unchanged for 70 years and it is still the standard. Whatever one needed, Garmin had it in his shop. And he had everything labeled, and so he could go right to it, and he didn't say, oh, I have to look for it. He always knew where everything was. Whenever he was on a project or a design project, I would go over to his house at three or four o'clock in the afternoon, and he would work until sometimes three or four o'clock in the morning. You go to bed, you get up and go to, go to work and do your regular job, then you come back at three or four o'clock and work with him again. He lit up at night and that's when the, the juices started flowing and the things got drawn and then he went out in the shop and built them. If he came over for dinner, he would come for dinner and come and go home because <laughs> he had things to do out in the shop. If you wanted to work with Garmin, he usually meant working after dinner, late at night in his shop, and if you were still working with him at midnight, we'd come inside and have a dish of ice cream and a cookie. A lot of products were engineered at the Kimmel house in the kitchen, and a lot of times over a bowl of ice cream in those cool little stainless steel bowls. And uh, we all liked ice cream, and it was a nice little break, get a little snack and some ice cream and cookies, and then go on with whatever project we were working on. Growing up, I heard Garmin say more times than I can count that we actually owed 
something to the community where we lived and worked. That because we were able to work and thrive and make a living in the community, that it was up to us to, to put back, to give back to that community. I was very involved in, in the music industry in Oklahoma, worked with some of the early people that, that put recording studios in town. And he recorded the Oklahoma Symphony Orchestra for 35 years and edited those tapes for replay on radio so that people who couldn't afford to go to the symphony could listen to the symphony a week later on a Sunday afternoon on public radio so they could hear those same pieces and be exposed to that music and that culture. And he did a lot of recording for a lot of other people also, either in his den, which was almost like a recording studio in itself. He built his own audio console because it was cleaner, lower noise, better frequency response than any of the commercial stuff that was made. This is a little tiny uh, mono to stereo or stereo to mono mixer. He built his, some of his own tape machines. He built his own turntable. He built his own television audio tuner. Or he made all, all his own circuit boards for all the electronic gadgets he made. And there was also a line of electronic products that Garmin and another guy made from power amplifiers and some pre-amplifiers. Garmin was so talented that he, if you needed something, he'd make it for you. He would solve all kinds of problems and he could repair you know, a lamp and it would be prettier and better than before. I mean, just almost anything you brought him, he would improve upon it. Garmin was actually involved in the medical community, was a good friend of many doctors and they would come to him for solutions to problems and that led to him being involved in developing the equipment necessary for open heart surgery, later on developing the vena cava filter. We finally wound up building them a prototype open heart machine that had a lot of automatic features about it and along with it came uh, the necessity for uh, catching clots that develop in the lower extremities when there's injury. And Dr. Greenfield came to him and said and you know, we have this blood clot and it's gonna and if it breaks loose we need to keep it from going to the heart and the lungs but we can't block the blood vent you know the vessel we can't keep the blood from flowing through the vessel so Garmin took the cone filter idea from the oil field and adapted it and, and literally built a, a cone filter that goes in somebody's vein. A woman came into my office one afternoon and wanted to see me and she introduced herself and said uh, I just wanted to thank you and I said uh, uh, I don't think I even know you and she says well I want to thank you anyway because you saved my life. He helped an awful lot of people in a lot of different ways uh, to help make their lives better or help solve a problem for somebody. I mean, the stuff he did behind the scenes to help people that we'll never know who all they were. Garmin gave away far more of the money that he made and the wealth that he had in his lifetime than he ever spent on himself or his family. And he did it to help people, oftentimes people who maybe didn't even have a great chance of making it, but Garmin believed in them and he thought they should have a chance to try their idea or to do their mission work or whatever it was he was supporting. If he could do something to help somebody, he was always so willing to do it. I think that the, the 12 points of the, of the Scout uh, law would probably describe Garmin if you had to use words trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. Garmin taught Sunday school. He taught Sunday school for, I think, 65 years. Whenever you sat in his class, you were going to learn things. You didn't sit there and have a discussion about small things. That probably molded my, uh, my view of the Bible and my view of God as much as anything did. Probably the finest Christian man I've ever met. Not probably, Garmin Kimmel is the finest Christian man I've ever met. I remember him as one of the most unusual, most brilliant young men I had ever met. He was always looking to do what other people said couldn't be done, and he was pretty successful at it.